Hey everybody, welcome back. If it's your first time here, my name is Emma. Today I wanna to be talking about things that I regret buying. I feel like in a lot of today's society, we just have like this constant urge and feeling that we need to just go out and like buy so many things. You're constantly seeing advertisements for the newest iPhone, the newest clothes, the newest this, the newest that, and it's just so unnecessary. The items and categories that are on this specific list, they don't bring any benefits to my life and they're just things that I feel like I've wasted a lot of money on and they're things that I am happy to start cutting out. This is something that I feel that working on getting them out of my life is going to help bring me a greater benefit than having them taking up clutter and spending money on them when I could be putting that money towards investments and starting a business and so many other things that will help improve my quality of life overall. And with that, the very first thing on the list is fast fashion. I feel that fast fashion is just a complete waste of money. Not that I'm advocating that you should go out and spend like a ton of money on something that's really expensive. When you spend money on something that is made better, that has more love put into it, just like higher quality materials that might cost you a little bit more in the end. That item typically holds up better. You're gonna have it for a longer time that you won't need to replace it as frequently. Thus, it actually winds up being cheaper. Also, fast fashion isn't typically made very well. You have to replace it probably every season. The way that it's made isn't usually very sustainable as well as a lot of the workers that are making those items aren't treated very well. And it's just an industry that I don't really feel comfortable supporting. Now, I'm not gonna say that I, I don't still have fast fashion items in my wardrobe. It is something that I am trying to get better at. I like to support small businesses or spending money on just like higher quality items that I know will last me a long time, even though they might be more expensive up front. But then overall, I said I'm not replacing them more frequently. So in the end, it will be cheaper. It is very hard for us to avoid fast fashion in today's industry, considering there are so many items and companies out there that do produce them. And a lot of those items are very trendy and I feel like that's something that's very difficult because it'll be something that is made for a certain season and then once that's done you don't wear it as often and then you just kind of get rid of it and then your money is gone so I think that it's usually better to invest in something that's you know maybe more sustainable more classic timeless pieces that you can just have overall I also do still understand that for a lot of people buying something that's more expensive up front may be more difficult because a lot of people don't maybe necessarily have a hundred dollars or eighty or whatever amount of money to spend on something that is better, more sustainable, and just higher quality that will last them longer. And that's typically why you go towards a cheaper item because if you don't make as much money, typically it is easier to go, oh, I'm gonna buy the $20 item instead of the $200 item because that's what I can afford. So I do understand that and I understand it can often be like a luxury to be able to buy something. I say I was actually just in Paris a week ago, but I was on the lookout for a scarf and I found this beautiful, beautiful cashmere scarf that because I couldn't read French, even though it was on a rack that said sale, I didn't realize that particular color wasn't on sale. It was just, it was another one. And when I found out it was 150 euros and it didn't have 50% plus 20% extra off discount that I thought it was gonna have, I was like, I, I, can, I couldn't at that time justify spending 150 euros, which I'd have to do it. I'll figure it out somewhere that even though I would, it was a beautiful, big, blanket cashmere black scarf that would have been perfect that I probably wouldn't replace for years. But at the same time, it's like I couldn't justify spending that amount of money on a scarf at that point in time. So I didn't buy it. Wish I had because it was beautiful and I loved it. But at the same time, financially, it just didn't make sense. I didn't want to buy something that was really cheap, but I couldn't afford that. So it is kind of like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place when it comes to those sort of things. So I totally get it. Even though I do understand that that is a very first world problem that I just described. Oh no, boohoo, poor me. I was in Paris and couldn't, but I couldn't afford the 150 euro scarf. The next thing that I kind of regret spending some money on would be super souvenirs. As I kind of said before, like, I love to travel and something that I always really like to get, I like to get t-shirts and postcards and cute little gimmicky things that I would just be like, oh, this is how I'm going to remember my trip. And I would just collect things and collect things and collect things. And I also remember I did this professional exchange to Taiwan in 2018. None of these were necessarily souvenirs, but I had received so many gifts while I was there that I actually had to buy an entirely new suitcase just to bring home the gifts. So that's an extreme situation. Having like all these little gimmicky things, Things, I collected t-shirts and I collected postcards and I had all of these items that like, I honestly wasn't even using. Like t-shirts turned into sleep shirts and like, it became too much and it started to contribute to the clutter. The things that I always enjoyed the most after my trips were typically extra excursions that I took. So when I went to London and I went and took an extra trip out to Bath and Stonehenge, I remember that so much more significantly
significantly than the t-shirt that I recently sold on eBay. Those are more important to me and I truly believe that the non-tangible parts of your trip are going to be what's more important to you as a souvenir that you can remember. Look at your pictures, remember the things that you went and did. I'm not saying that souvenirs are necessarily like a bad, bad thing. I do still like magnets. I recently brought back two magnets. I typically like to stick to one, but I recently brought back two magnets on my Paris trip. And it's just kind of like a little thing that I can have up on my fridge. And to me, like that makes me happy. But overall, I just feel souvenirs are often very cheaply made. That's not where your memory is going to be. Your memory is going to be your excursion, the food that you had. That's like another big one. I would rather spend money on a really good meal than a t-shirt. And yes, I may have spent five, 10, five, 10 euros between the two magnets. So it really wasn't that bad. I say, I feel like I'm a bit of a hypocrite saying that I still bought magnets. I prioritize museums and I prioritize having escargot at a really old famous escargot restaurant. At least that's what my friend told me. I should Google it and verify it. That was more important to me. And I feel like that was how I better regulated how I spent my money than on extra items to bring home that would turn into clutter and that I would then get rid of. Because I honestly feel most of the souvenirs that I've had are just things that pile up and then I get rid of and I either try to sell or I throw away. So the next thing is a much more general category and it's more just anything that I just bought because it was on sale. You go to the store or you're browsing online and you see something and you're like, oh, it's on sale. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna save so much money. Like, no, you're not. Or say I go to the grocery store. I'm very bad about this one. And I go and I have my list and I get these things and I walk by something. I'm like, that looks so good. And it's 20% off. Oh, it's $2 off. I have gone out at least buying a bunch of extra stuff that I didn't need because I was like, oh, it's on sale. I'm saving all of this money. Well, no, I'm not. Because now I just spent an extra 20, 30, $40 on stuff that I didn't go to the store to buy. It's regrettable because it's money that I didn't have budgeted towards those things and it's things that I could have better used in another place like paying down debt I hate that in marketing there's just like this trick of like the red coloring and the word sale or discount buy now and then it gets you and then I've just fallen guilty to it so many times and it is something that I do personally continue to struggle with but I am trying to avoid that not that I want to pay full price I absolutely believe that yes if it's on sale and you were going to already get it then perfect but do not buy it because it's on sale. The next category of items that I regret buying are items that I've seen ads for on social media. So say you're scrolling through Instagram and you see this item that then it's like, oh, this is going to change your life and X, Y, and Z. And then you click on the ad and you're like, oh my God, this is right. I have to have this. And then you put it in your cart and you click buy. So obviously that ad did a great job because it converted you into a buyer. But more than once have I fallen victim to, oh, that looks really cool. I want it. I have to have it. Adds to cart, clicks buy. I feel like this is similar to when you were falling victim to when something says sale and you weren't going to buy it. If you hadn't seen this ad, it's an item you weren't going to buy. It's just like extra money that I didn't need to spend, but I spent and now I have this extra item. Again, this comes back to my like decluttering my life thing <laughs> that it takes up space in my house that I didn't previously need and it just kind of sucks. I think one of the first times I remember falling victim to this on Instagram, or it might have been Facebook, but I saw it, it was like that cat t shirt that was going around for a long time and it was like they were like sprawled I'll put a picture somewhere that they were like sprawled out they were like it was like not today oh that's so cute I think I bought it from like a drop shipping store honestly because it took I don't know like 20 days to get to me and I think I paid 18 bucks for it and I'm pretty sure it went into a goodwill donation it was just kind of like I didn't need that like it was cute it was gimmicky I wore it once I spent the money I never wore it again so I, I don't like the social media ads I know they're important and I like that's how I've actually found two small businesses that I love and continue to support. My point is that it's an item you didn't need. You wouldn't have known it existed if you hadn't seen the advertisement and now your money is gone. I regret a lot of those purchases and I'm getting better. I'm trying. The last item that I want to talk about or just like category of items are luxury goods. And I do feel like this sounds like it's going to be in like contradiction to the first thing where I was like, don't buy fast fashion, buy something that's better. Okay. Yes. However, I think it's important to buy well-made items but it doesn't mean you need to go to the extreme like you don't need the newest item from Gucci you do not need to have tons and tons of things that are luxury and name brand items just because my point is mostly don't spend money on items that you probably just can't afford you don't want 
be spending money on things just to maybe impress somebody else. You're spending money on things that probably temporarily make you happy. The thing with luxury goods is that you're buying something that is very expensive and I'm not saying you shouldn't buy luxury pieces. However, the issue is if you're buying it to stay in fashion, there's gonna be a new collection every single year. And this is probably mostly from the movies. You could find someone who's like, you know, oh, that's from last year's collection. Or you go on social media and someone's got the newest bag and they're like, oh my gosh, now I just have the new one. And some of those bags are thousands of dollars, if not in the five digit zone. I don't have the money to be spending, you know, four or five digits of money. I don't know, like $2,000 or like $10,000 on a bag or a dress. Like that's insane. Now I'm kind of making this sound like I've purchased like a lot of them. And I don't want to say that I necessarily have, but I have gone after a lot of like name brand items to make myself look wealthier than I am. And a lot of what that wound up doing was I was spending a lot of money on items that I didn't need and continued to hurt my finances. I was more poor continuing to try to look rich. And this is something that made me unhappy. Like I wasn't impressing anybody. When I did try to buy higher brand name items, I did try to buy them from places like Bertrand's Rack, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, like places where I was gonna find those on a heavier discount. I think like my favorite Michael Kors purse that I actually don't even use anymore. I was so excited because I found it on clearance for a hundred dollars. And I don't even know, I feel like Michael Kors might be like lower end luxury. Please don't hate on me for that. And the fact that it was on clearance for a hundred dollars, I think it was originally like a 300 or $400 bag. It was something that I had my eye on for a very long time. So it's not like I was like, I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I have to get that. But I have spent money on a lot of things just because I thought they were cute and they were like name brand. I, th I spent like $180, $80 on a pair of like Steve Madden sandals that hurt my feet and I've worn twice. So I'm just like, it's not worth it to me at least. I would rather buy small business items that are well-made because I truly do believe like small businesses usually put a lot more love and care into their things. Long story short, I regret buying items that made me look rich when I didn't have the money and then it continued to hurt hurt me financially and impress no one. So for me, that was a problem. So that's my list. Obviously, I don't shame anybody for having these things. I am not condoning you because you can only afford fast fashion or you absolutely love luxury items. I don't know, you love your souvenirs or you found your favorite item because of an Instagram ad that you impulsively purchased. Of course, I understand that there are pros and cons to each category and that's about it, I think. So thank you so much. Hopefully this helps you out. If it doesn't, that's cool. I understand everyone has different life circumstances, but this is just my personal experience and it's something that I'm continuing to work through and I know it's very difficult in today's day and age, especially with ads everywhere and everything being so expensive. Thank you, inflation. So thank you so much. I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.